In this step, the leg levelers or leg studs, which are these four pieces in the back as well, will be installed. This is what it looks like. For this step, you're gonna need four quarter inch nut inserts, four leg levelers or leg studs, leveling studs, and you'll need these two parts. These are the, this is the base, the first part of the base and the second part of the base. And it needs to be oriented um, in this direction. So you have the, the cutout square on the left and these two areas here above you. So we're going to flip them over. We're gonna put the nut inserts on the bottom here. So you need to flip these over. And we're gonna put the nut inserts in the larger holes here. One, two, and then on the other side, underside of this one here and here. And we're gonna use a Allen wrench or an Allen, um, an Allen bit to, to drive this in as vertically as possible. It might be better to use a bit so you can have a screwdriver or a, um, a bit uh, driver uh, be as vertical as possible. I'm gonna use this method. Some of you may not have one. Okay, and that's all you need. It can stick out a little bit. Um, you don't want to drive it in too much because you'll be damaging the wood at that point. Let's go to the next one. Okay, we can go ahead and put the leveling stud. And just for orientation, um, you'll have like three, a little triangle um, or um, arrangement of holes here and uh, two holes here with so that's generally how you'd want to orient this piece when you're putting this in in this step the two guide rails will be installed fasten the linear rails to the base or the two bases two parts of the base of the laser so you'll need 12 screws on each side number eight one and a half inch uh, so that makes 24 You'll need um, mating nuts and washers for this as well. 24 washers and 24 nuts. Um, make sure to uh, only fit them in and not tighten them all the way. So, because we're going to need to adjust it later on. Also notice the orientation of the base. You'll see the square notch out on that side and the whole pattern You'll see that there's that triangular hole pattern here. And also orient the rail so that the short uh, part where the hole is the closest to the end. And this one is farther from the end. How I usually do it is I just take a nut and a washer. Washer I generally put on this side, but it really doesn't matter. So I just take the washer and nut, I put it up against and sometimes I'll put it all the way up the, I'll put the nut all the way up against the bottom and I'll start screwing in. So that, al that allows for a good alignment of the nut. So I'm gonna keep it loose. Okay, on the other side. Okay, at this point, there should be about this much play. On both sides. In this step, the, the bearing blocks that slide on the guide rails will be installed. These bearing blocks will have plastic protectors inside of the bearing block to protect the, or keep the ball bearings from being liberated. These ball bearings want to come out once you take this off, the ball bearings are now set free to, to wander and, and, and uh, pop out. So make sure that you keep this in place. And in this step, we're gonna install the Zerk fitting on one of these sides. And I generally put the Zerk fitting on a side that will be easier to access. 
and I'm going to put it on this side or put it on this side once it's installed so I have some access to add grease to the to the bearing and you want to tighten it to a point where it won't interfere with the actual rail so in this condition it may be pretty close but I want it to be a little bit up anyway so I can access the Zerk fitting you should be able to use just a, a standard pliers or um, crescent wrench for this it is greasy so so as you're putting it on make sure that the plastic protector is in there and then you're going to start the insertion of the rail and it's just going to pop out you can see that my hands are greasy this is greasy you might want to wipe it off a little bit test the travel should have no play whatsoever and should smoothly ride along the the rail Okay, from this point on, make sure that this doesn't come off of the rail. It's pretty stiff. It's not going to um, move by itself in most cases unless there's something heavy on it and you tip it. So just make sure that it's somewhere in the middle that it's safe from uh, going off of the sides. If you really don't think you can keep it safe, another way to, do, uh, to, uh, to ensure that this is not going to go off the ends is you can put like maybe a little uh, clamp or something on the ends to make sure it doesn't. Uh, roll off. Okay, that one good. All right. I'm holding the plastic piece as I handle this to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. The gantry bottom plate, which is this part right here, will be installed onto the bearing blocks, the two bearing blocks that has just been installed on the rails. The ori orientation of this piece is as shown where the square notches to my far right, upper right, and this piece is oriented. This is where the motor is going to be installed. This is away from that notch. You'll need eight M6 screws for this. And this is where the, the looseness of these rails come in handy. So it's going to allow you to position this portion of the gantry. Just use your hands to get it, get the thread started so there's no cross threading. And you can use a driver or a screwdriver. I tend to use a screwdriver for this. Now I'm going to, now that I've gotten all the, all the screws down to the, the surface, I'm going to go ahead and tighten. I'm still not going to tighten the rails yet. I want to put the sides on. Once I have the sides on, because there's screws, the sides cross the uh, this seam here. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and align one of these and um, then tighten both sides. The motor will be installed onto this gantry bottom plate. This is a 100 ounce inch motor. And the set screws are 1 16th Allen wrench size. Install it in this orientation where the hub is at the farthest from the face and also well, there's no flat so it doesn't really matter. It's going to be pretty um, tight already. You want to insert the drive pulley as close to the face as possible and you're going to be leaving a space of about 0 0.05 inches. So that's about where you're going to want it to be. And I'm just going to do my best at tightening these. You don't want to over tighten these because they're really small. And if you notice any looseness going on with this drive pulley, which is probably not going to be um, happening because this is a really tight tolerance to the shaft, um, you can use uh, some Loctite blue to keep the uh, set screws in and also maybe some glue with the shaft and mating with the um, with the drive pulley, the hub. The motor will be mounted to this part of the gantry and we'll use four number eight screws and four rivet nuts. The rivet nuts are going to go underneath into the hole like so. I'm orienting the, the motor so the wires come out 
this direction because the cable carrier will be uh, the uh, receiving of the cables of the cable carrier will be right right here and it'll come in this direction. And you can go ahead and tighten this down. If the rivet nuts you get are a little bit larger, uh, that it will barely fit inside the hole, you can use a longer number eight screw um, and grab the, the nut and just screw that down until the nut uh, goes into the hole. The gantry back plate will be installed onto the gantry bottom plate. The back plate is support for the the main y-axis rail. You'll need six quarter inch screws, one inch long, and six cross dowels. To assist with the, because there's nothing, um, the cross dowel is just gonna sit in here and it's gonna go too far down, I'm gonna use a magnet. And if it seems to be a little bit um, angled, you'll want to straighten it out using a flat screwdriver while you're driving in the main screw. I'm not gonna tighten this too tight because I wanna make sure that all of the screws are in and then I'll tighten at the end. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten all of them. 